um, I was excited to ask Thea and uh, Kim Kim Pat some questions already, but I, I guess I'll have to wait. Uh, so, uh, and maybe include this discussion in our um, um, discussion later on uh, after this session. So thank you um, to the organizers for inviting me to speak about um, a topic that is being recognized or is recognized as one of the most critical in uh, public health now, which is vaccine hesitancy. And uh, maybe what I'd like to do for the next few minutes is situate this in the Philippine context. There isn't a lot of data. I'd like to thank the DOH team for giving me access to the most recent surveys, which I'll be sharing with you. But the focus will really be to talk about um, some questions, specifically what it is, second, what is the extent of the problem, and third, why it happens. So hesitancy is a very complex um, behavioral issue, and um, it has a lot of interrelated determinants. However, um, one approach is really to try to um, understand it in a more systematic manner by exploring different influences as well as uh, vaccine and vaccination specific issues, and also to try to diagnose uh, underlying reasons which should focus on differentiating between barriers related to acceptance and access. So although we tend to lump them all together as ay ayaw nila, So we lump them all together as parang one uh, behavior. There are really different um, considerations and being able to define the problem well is a large step towards solving it. So when we talk about addressing vaccine hesitancy, we need to understand the magnitude and the setting of the problem. We need to talk about the diagnosis of the root causes, understand um, some evidence-based strategies to address it, and also implement monitoring and evaluation to determine the impact and sustainability of the intervention. So when we talk about what this is all about, we're actually thinking within the box of um, diagnosis. No? We, we want to be able to define the problem well enough so that we understand, uh, well, as much as we can about it so we can propose good solutions. So the definitions have evolved over time. Initially, in 2014, when this was being recognized on a global scale, um, the definition was fairly simple, and it just involved a delay in acceptance or refusal of vaccination despite the vaccines being available. However, um, there has been a better appreciation of the different factors involved in, in vaccine hesitancy. And um, now we think about this as a motivational state of being conflicted or opposed to getting vaccinated. And this recognizes hesitancy as an intention or motivation that's separate to the resulting behavior. So what does this mean? A person may be hesitant, but they'll end up getting the vaccine anyway, right? And we've seen this very clearly in, in the COVID pandemic. There are lots of people who didn't want to be vaccinated, but what did they end up doing? They got vaccinated because they couldn't go to work, they couldn't ride public transport, and so on and so forth. So you can actually decouple hesitancy from the behavior. And much as we don't want to express it this way, the end result is really getting people vaccinated regardless. No? So from the public health perspective, that's very important. And it enables the behaviors and their influences to be better understood and measured separately. So I think this second uh, definition is something that's worth mulling over and um, trying to uh, operationalize no, in our um, different uh, organizations and settings so that we get the outputs that we need. So um, I'm sure you're quite familiar with this diagram already. Vaccine hesitancy, vaccine acceptance, vaccine confidence, it's a continuum. It's not just a single entity. And you can actually um, classify people according to levels of severity. Para ding sakit, di ba? Kung uh, may sakit tayo sinasabing mild, moderate, or severe, ang vaccine confidence, vaccine hesitancy, vaccine acceptance is also uh, classifiable into degrees of severity. And there are people who are very active. Alam natin yung mga vaccine addict, nakakasampung doses na, ayaw pa rin tumigil. Meron din namang, sige na nga, kasi yung kapitbahay ko. Nagbabakuna, kasama na ako dyan. Meron namang 
pwede bang to lang tapos ito ayoko or this only this kind and I don't like the other other platforms and there are those na patayin mo na ako I will not be vaccinated no so we know all sorts of people and um, this is really very familiar and very real to us now so there are um, heterogeneous groups they have varying levels of indecision there are people who accept all there is people who delay some there are people who refuse all and I think realizing that this is um, the the uh, how would you put this the characteristic of the problem is is really also very important to us so let's go now to the uh, next question which is what is the extent of the problem so um, uh, Thea showed us earlier the story of Jon Snow, so I'd like to show you a little bit of history also. And even as we say that, uh, oh, this is a re very recent problem and people have not been opposed to vaccines until quite recently. If you look at this, talo tayo, may kanta pa sila. No? So since the 1850s, it's been active. People have said that uh, vaccine hesitancy or vaccine acceptance or vaccine um, confidence has been an issue since the time that Edward Jenner started vaccinating people. And if you read old um, correspondence, it's really quite interesting because they did have issues like that even in um, uh, the early centuries. No? So, however, maybe what we can say is that organized movements are quite recent and the viral spread of viral disinformation has been very, very recent. And so looking at this um, uh, figures, we know that there are um, stories of resistance, organized resistance as early as the 1800s. And the resurgence actually um, happened in the 1970s um, and was unfortunately quite associated with uh, the publication of um, Wakefield's paper on MMR and autism. And I guess since that time, since there has been more access you know, to literature and um, the rise of social media, um, the speed at which misinformation and disinformation has really um, um, grown exponentially. So in fact, if you look at this, and, and this collation is up until maybe August or September, hindi pa tapos ang taon, no? Hinahabol na nung 2022, yung buong 2021. And I would say that if I looked at this today, I, it would probably exceed the bar for 2021. So this is really just a reflection of how um, large, how uh, extensive the problem is. The WHO has also recognized this as a significant issue and placed vaccine hesitancy as one of the major threats to world health in 2019. No? So this was before the pandemic. It was already being flagged as a huge problem. And uh, of course, we all know um, the problems, the barriers that vaccine hesitancy posed uh, for us uh, during this past uh, three years. So this map shows us a snapshot of how hesitant the different parts of the world is. And you will see that in the Philippines, we are colored um, yellow, which says that about 50 to 60% of the respondents agree with the statement that I believe vaccines are safe. So kalahati lang ng mga kinausap nila ang kayang sumagot ng ganon in 2018. Ewan ko lang ngayon, no? Tignan natin. We're all very familiar with this very dramatic um, infographic um, coming out of uh, data collated by the team of uh, Professor Heidi Larson. And um, contrasting 2015 to 2018 data, there was a huge drop in um, vaccine confidence. And out of 1,500 participants who were surveyed in 2018, um, compared to the 2015 data, there was a fourfold drop in confidence from 82% strongly agreeing that uh, vaccines were safe to, in 2015 to only 21% in 2018. So that is um, how large the problem uh, was no? coming into the pandemic. Uh, um, maybe as a disclaimer, hindi naman ganito kababa no? nagsimula tayo kahit papano naman tumaas ng konti. And much as we are saddened by the different uh, outbreaks that we had in 2019, Parang three years, four years down the line, I kind of think of that as a dress rehearsal for the pandemic. Parang mabait pa rin ng Diyos eh, kasi we were able to activate, reactivate our systems because we had these three huge problems to deal with. 
the ARID team was reconstituted actually in 2019, uh, partly as a response to this. No, and by the time we had this pandemic, at least we had the beginnings of a network that was ready to step into the vacuum um, to try to make a um, significant response. Now, um, more recent data coming from the World Bank, um, which was collated at about uh, the middle of 2020, show that in comparison to other countries in the region, the Philippines shows a higher level of hesitancy compared to our neighboring countries. And uh, unfortunately, when you look at um, more more recent data coming from the Hopkins Center for Communication Programs, um, this is as of January, sorry, June of 2022, when they asked respondents uh, who were unvaccinated, no, who is most willing to accept the vaccine, there's certain um, uh, characteristics, behaviors, and uh, demographic um, um, features no, that we need to pay attention to so we can target them specifically and get them to come on board. So here we see uh, the orange um, circles representing the most significant results. And uh, we will see that those who are most willing to accept the vaccine if they are unvaccinated now are um, um, ed more educated sectors, no? the bottom circle. 60% of them have college or advanced degrees. A slight majority are male and a slight majority reside in um, urban areas. So this is actually quite reflective of our surveys. But what are our problem um, areas now when we look at um, either COVID or non-COVID vaccine uptake? Uh, I don't think it's the urban centers, no. or if it is the urban centers, it's probably an issue of um, um, population density and uh, some things, things related to access. Pero acceptance, medyo mas mahirap abutin yung um, less, less educated and um, um, residing outside of the urban centers. Um, if you look at the country, Philippines, in comparison to other countries globally, so um, the median is represented by the yellow circle and the Philippines is represented by the red outline, you will see that for certain um, features, the Philippines has very unique um, concerns. No? So kung titignan natin particularly that first line, concerned about side effects, you will see that the Philippines, it's a very important issue. No? And if you will also look at plan to wait to see if it's safe, that's um, circle number four. Ganun din. So very related. Sigurista tayo, ayaw nating mauna. So um, versus um, yung altruism, sorry, hindi tayo ganun. Others need it more? Hindi, kung kailangan ko, ako. No? Or um, concerned about the cost? Well, kasi wala namang masyadong gastos ngayon for the COVID vaccines. No? It's against my religious beliefs. It's not as much of a problem. So maybe if we're thinking about that as a reason, it doesn't figure too much. And um, I don't like vaccines. Well, I guess confounding yung question na to kasi kaya mo nga ayaw kasi natatakot ka and you're safe. Not, not safe. Yung efficacy is not a feature. So kahit ipilit pa natin na ah, it's good, it works, ganyan-ganyan, that's not the target that we want to, to um, hit. No? Um, other features, I don't believe I, had the, I need the vaccine because I already had COVID. I don't spend time with any high-risk people, etc., etc. So it's not actually a question of need that's driving people. It's the fear. It's the anxiety. So maybe when we figure out our communications, we have to really uh, focus on addressing that um, issue. So one other thing that was quite an eye-opener for me is that when you look at the people who are unvaccinated, and you've tried to figure out why they're not being vaccinated, it's not as much structural barriers. Because if you look at this, they're not saying because I'm not eligible or I don't have access or the appointment didn't work. Although meron naman, may mga ganun ng dahilan. No? But everything is less than 20%. So logistics is not the barrier. It's going back to this. No, I think this is quite striking. It's the fear. It's the anxiety. It's the worry. No. So, medyo matatakotin talaga tayo. Sigurista tayo. Ayaw nating mauna. Okay. 
So, on the other hand, no, nakakatawa. Hindi ka nagpabakuna pero kung yung anak mo, okay siya. Kasi if you look at this, if you ask the group of people who were unvaccinated and uh, uh, left them with the question of, will you have your child vaccinated once they're eligible? The answer is definitely higher than 50%. So they're willing to have their kids vaccinated. Wag lang ako, pero yung anak ko, okay. But maybe, I'm sorry, but they didn't uh, check the motivations for this, no? Baka naman kasi ang feeling ng mga tao is um, kasi kailangan ng bata, bata yan, binabakunahan, so on and so forth. So this would be interesting to tease out, okay? So, um, the WHO also has uh, data coming from their Ipsos survey. This was uh, conducted in July of 2022. Um, and they say that um, out of 33% of respondents who have had a booster dose, these are um, numbers for acceptance. So, parang kung kukumpara natin dun sa 2018 data, and even the 2015 data, awa ng Diyos, hindi na tayo ganun kapangit. No? Medyo okay-okay na naman tayo. But um, um, we also still have to keep in mind that for those people who have opted not to be vaccinated, uh, matigas talaga sila. No? And they, they represent the last mile that we have to reach. So why does it happen? The many models are in place. It's a behavior. There are many issues that influence this there's the three C's model of confidence, complacency, and convenience. So we think about um, issues of trust as one of the paramount barriers that we have to surmount. Um, I think uh, we have to realize and accept the fact that the uh, dengue vaccine controversy was really huge for us. And even now, no, even if, as we don't want to keep on mentioning it, kasi naaalala, parang kumbaga, nare-retraumatize tayong lahat, kasi yun na naman ang pinag-uusapan natin. And maybe for some sectors, ah, ano na nga yun, hindi nga nila alam, tapos kinukwento pa natin, uh, it's there. No? It's, the, it's the elephant in the room. Maybe we just have to think about a more creative way of addressing it so we don't keep on refreshing that memory because for some, it's no longer relevant. But anyway, confidence is something we need to keep building on. And then complacency is an issue. No? Um, uh, before the outbreaks in 2019, I don't think there was as much of an awareness about measles. Even among healthcare workers in the urban setting, particularly those who are based in hospitals, because we hardly saw any measles cases. No? And then um, um, also convenience. This is quite a significant thing. Uh, we keep currently, you know, one of the, the issues that are being raised, I don't know if it's a convenience ex convenient excuse, but uh, people do say that I don't want to get sick because I have to miss work if I get my booster. And one day's work is a huge uh, problem. You no, know? Missing one day's work is a huge problem. So we do need to realize that this is uh, important for our uh, population. So in as much as confidence and complacency are um, a lot of our focus um, items for people who are working on the vaccine confidence and vaccine hesitancy arena, we need to realize that convenience can be significant and can be significant. And if we address that, that's at least one C out of the way. No, we we try to make um, everything more convenient so that it's one less reason for people not to take up vaccines. And also, um, um, there's been a re-examination of this model and beyond thinking about confidence, convenience, co and complacency. Um, we, there are some societies and communities where a collective response is, imp is important. I, I've already shown you that it's in, in the Philippines, it doesn't seem to be as much of a factor, but maybe in some communities, some countries, this can be uh, a target no, that we can intervene on. And also, um, calculation can also be important. So what does this mean? Naninimbang, no? parang kailangan hawak mo lahat ng information bago ka magdedesisyon, which plays very much into our characteristic of being sigurista. Diba? We want to be sure before we take up the vaccine. So you do a lot of calculation. Sa kaiisip, 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 di ka na nagdesisyon. Wala na. So it's, I think it's very Pinoy. No? We, we, have to, ano, we have to understand this behavior so that we can address it adequately. So um, I've talked about um, confidence. I've talked about um, complacency. And um, all of these being uh, byproducts of a very sincere intent no? 
to um, discover for yourself whether these vaccines are for you. But we also have to realize that, and particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic, that there have been a lot of deliberate attempts to disseminate wrong information and to undermine the public health response and advance alternative agendas. So meron talagang masasamang loob, hindi lang out of a genuine desire na hindi masama yan, huwag kayong, huwag kayong magpapabakuna kasi mapapasama kayo. Meron talagang may vested interests. And what gains do they stand to get? No? Merong may financial gain, may political gain, and meron talagang masasama na ang ginagawa lang nila to for experimental manipulation. So we have to go beyond our usual concepts and medyo mas maging suspechoso ng konti. No? And para alam natin kung ano yung kalaban natin. So, um, to end, no, I know I started off uh, this talk with three questions, what, what, and why, but I think we can't leave this discussion without talking about how we can help. And um, our goal is really to try to um, fit in as much of these boxes, the yellow and the green box, so that we can go to the blue box, which is achieving vaccination. So how do you improve what people think and feel? How do you uh, recommend or improve social processes, motivate people, address practical issues. So I would just like to focus um, on um, the first yellow box and um, talk about how we can improve uh, what people think and feel. And primarily this is uh, through communication or improving our communication styles. So you know, when you hear um, stuff that's wrong, what's our instinctive reaction, particularly as healthcare workers? Hindi, mali yan. Um, we correct the, mis in the misperception. And we're told that that's not a very effective communication model. Kasi bakit? Papaaway lang tayo dyan. Diba? Walang pupuntahan. So, instead of uh, focusing your time on correcting misperceptions, you just pivot on focusing on the disease. Pwede namang, well, you don't have to agree, but you don't have to argue. And then you just talk about, but we know ito. And then, um, communication styles are very important. No, we don't ask. We use presumptive communication. We don't say, magpapabakuna po ba kayo today? Ang statement is, magpapabakuna kayo today. <laughs> no, so the tone of voice makes a difference. And no, so we also have to talk about motivational interviewing. No, um, Finding out uh, why no? um, there may be some uh, concerns about acceptance. We need to build trust. No? Sinabi natin nung simula, yung confidence is a big issue. I think as clinicians, as uh, healthcare professionals, ang ating approach is, ay kaya yan hindi nagpapabakuna kasi hindi niya alam, hindi niya naintindihan. Kaya ang ating approach is information, 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 when in fact, hindi yun ang problema. Sabi nga, eh, di ba, hindi, hindi naman nila, uh, uh, hindi naman sila umaayaw kasi akala nila hindi gumagana yung bakuna. It's not effectiveness that's their issue. It's the worry about the safety. And finally, because we understand all of these factors, then we can tailor our communication efforts and understand that because trust is the issue, kahit hindi pa natin alam lahat ng facts, dahil pinangungunahan na natin, pinipre, how do you put that, um, pre-bunk na natin sila, di ba? Merong term na dinidebunk natin yung misinformation. Hindi, dapat nauunahan mo sila. Bago pa nila narinig yung mali, before hearing the false um, news or the fake news or the fake data, you already inoculate them with information. You pre-bunk them and build uh, trust by communicating often and transparently. So you might not know everything, but communicating that this is what we know at this point puts everybody on the same page and builds trust because now it becomes our decision, not just your decision being forced on me. Okay? So um, what has that resulted in? No? Because all of these were actually being implemented during the COVID-19 pandemic, and these are lessons that we need to translate into our national program, our regular program, which has been severely impacted by all of our, um, the COVID pandemic. No? So as of January, um, it seems that only 8% of adult Filipinos expressed hesitancy compared to 18% in September of 2021. The latest survey at that time admit, uh, showed that only 6% admitted to being uncertain, significantly less than the 19, 24, and 
the percentage of those reporting that they got at least one dose increased from 10% in June of 2021 to 35% in September. And vaccine hesitancy fell in all areas, even in Mindanao, which is our still the most challenging region. Some more recent data no, coming from the WHO corroborates this information. And they say that vaccine acceptance has been increasing. And what we should do is to continue engaging trusted voices, strengthen the last mile approach, and tell stories. Because remember, trust is the issue. So how do we engage or how do we improve trust? We share our own experiences. We share that because my dad, who is 87 years old, who's being dialyzed, who has had two cancers, was vaccinated before he got COVID, he came home alive. No? So stories like that will, will make people think about their own parents who are probably in the same situation and who they have not uh, brought to the vaccination center because of their fears. No? We also want to be able to continue communicating the information that booster doses can protect us from severe disease. This is uh, the latest no, data that I was able to access from uh, the DOH team. And they say that uh, they did an, onla an online survey of about 2,000 Filipinos, the majority of whom resided in Luzon. And they, show, um, they uh, got information that employed respondents were more likely to complete vaccination Lower socioeconomic status was associated with hesitancy or refusal. So we saw that no, in the previous data set. It's still the same problem. And uh, the main reason was still concern about safety. No? So it doesn't change or it hasn't changed yet. So ito pa rin dapat ang target natin. And misconceptions about uh, effectiveness contribute to driving hesitancy. Facilitators were um, the belief that vaccines are effective, protect their loved ones, and are, enc uh, are encouraged by medical experts and trusted uh, messengers. So I, I hope um, in the past few minutes I've been able to bring you through you know, some questions that I think we all need to keep thinking about. Parang ano eh, we shouldn't be thinking about hesitancy and acceptance as one big problem. Parang in the same way that we diagnose an illness, we diagnose symptoms, and come up or we try to understand symptoms to come up with a diagnosis. Dapat ganito din to. Hindi lang iisang sakit ang vaccine hesitancy. Hindi lang yan lagnat na bibigyan mo ng paracetamol. Kailangan malaman mo, bakit ba nila lagnat? Bakit pa hesitant? Para alam mo kung ano yung tamang gamot. You try to target the root cause. And I just like to share my fangirling picture. This is with <laughs> Professor Heidi Larson. No? So she really has a lot of... Um, um, had done a lot of work on vaccine hesitancy, and I had the opportunity to meet her in, in um, Annecy um, through a conference that was organized by Valentina's team. And one of the things she said is that we shouldn't ever assume that um, uh, what people are thinking, no? Parang hindi naman natin alam where they're coming from. But we shouldn't also forget that they might change. So hope springs eternal. Meron pa tayong kayang gawin. Let's not burn bridges, no? And try to keep communicating. Maraming salamat po.